In Australia, there are over 25.69 million people living in about 10.3 million properties countrywide. That equates to over $8.4 trillion. Now, believe it or not, only about 82% of Australians purchase property only once in their lifetime. Now, out of these 82%, only 16% really actually invest in property. But that's not gonna blow your mind. What's gonna blow your mind is that less than 1%, 0.000, 84% of Australians, that's less than 21,000, have more than six properties within their portfolio. So I wanna ask you, are you in that 1% or do you wanna be a part of that? Hi, I'm Mark and at Cube Corp, we can make that a reality. Since being founded over five years ago, through our many services, Cube Corp has been able to assist and educate hundreds of clients to either get into their first property or expand their portfolios. I'm Grace. At Cube Corp, we offer many services. Finance service. If you're looking for a loan or refinance, our in-house team can help you tailor the perfect package for you. Property management. If you have a home and want to sell it, or need someone to manage your investment properties, let us help you. Our immigration service is open 24-7 to guide you through visa applications and migration strategies. We also offer development and construction services. So we're here to talk about property investment. And what is that? Well, let's consider all successful multimillionaires in the world. Whether they're investing in stocks, in shares, in companies, or in their own businesses, every single one of them has been able to grow their wealth even more with this physical asset known as property investment. Okay. So we'll be talking about a few different strategies very shortly to help you increase your wealth. Let's begin. First of all, getting started. The way we like to take uh, property investment it, when we're starting off is in three steps. Of course, knowing your situation, understanding what sort of returns you can get from property investment, and what are the things that you want. This is more regarding the different products that are available on the market right now, and including some that you may not have considered or heard of before. So when you're knowing your particular situation, you want to ask yourself what sort of timeline, what sort of time frame, how soon do you want to start? This is very important in determining whether you're looking at an investment that is either existing, newly built or off the plan. This also ties into your current financial situation. What sort of deposit have you got? What sort of budget are you constrained to? This is different to borrowing capacity. OK, you may be able to go to a bank or to a lender and they may be able to say to you that, hey, you can borrow up to one point two million dollars. When we're budget, uh, when we're dealing with the budget for your property investment, depending on the type of strategy you're looking at, it might be worthwhile not to put all your eggs in one basket and rather than maximize, rather than using the entirety of that borrowing capacity, um, you might want to budget it so that you diversify different properties with different smaller chunks of investments. So it's key to speak to a broker or a financial planner and, of course, a reliable property agent. When we're talking about the returns for property investment, they come in the form of capital growth, which everyone um, is quite aware of when you're dealing with um, investments. Um, of course, the cash flow, how much money is uh, coming in and out and, and uh, on a daily basis and what sort of tax benefits uh, you can get. And we will touch briefly on what it is, what it means to diversify your portfolio. Now, when we're talking about capital growth, let's take an example. Now, this was taken from realestate.com. Consider a property in 2012, which was purchased at $636,000. Now, in 2020, which was just last year, this property was able, the average property price in Kellyville was raised to $1.3 million. This is near double. So the capital gain on this property is the difference between what you would have purchased the price, uh, the, 
purchase price at the start and what you would have sold for at the end. Some popular capital growth uh, statistics um, based on results on late 2020. In terms of the highest growth areas in Sydney, number one came in at 39% in North Epping. Uh, Bexley came in at 33%, North Avoca came in also at 33%, and Beverly Hills, um, not number four, but is actually number 10, at 25%. So these statistics also from realestate.com.au are readily accessible. And when we are looking at uh, the news and the media and how they portray how is the market and what sort of capital growth uh, is expected uh, or has been seen, um, do take into account that they do take a wide spread of, um, of results. So some areas may not have done as well as these particular areas in terms of capital growth. But over the last 18 months, these areas were pockets where the highest amount of uh, capital growth was found in Sydney. <clears throat> that other form of return is in the form of cash flow. Now, cash flow, in a sense, can be broken down into two components, your income and your expenses. When you're dealing with property, income solely comes from your rental income. Okay, And when we're dealing with our expenses, these include your loan repayments, strata fees, management fees, council fees, water fees, and a whole lot more. It could also include uh, insurances. Uh, it could also include some land taxes. Uh, when you're doing your cash flows, uh, when your particular property portfolio, uh, the land value exceeds a certain amount. Uh, I believe it's over 830,000. Uh, this exact number, you can speak to a broker or a solicitor about that. But your land tax in Sydney uh, then becomes an annual repayment. So you have to take that into account for your ongoing expenses for your property. Um, and of course, depreciation comes into play as well, particularly when we are dealing with um, minimizing our tax. So let's take an example. Here is a house and land package uh, that was available at Oxley Ridge. This is a five bedroom um, house that's to be built. The package itself is $675,000. Um, it requires a deposit of 20%, 135,000. And this is the income that is coming from the property. So approximately $570 per week. This is based on a rental guarantee available um, for that particular product. Now this is over a five year period where they're receiving up to $139,650,000, okay? Um, over five years, which is quite good. Now taking into account the expenses over time, the subtotal is about 20,000 per year. So the total cash flow you can expect from this per year over the next five years is about $151,000.80. That's pretty good. So that's cash flow going into your pocket. And this number down the bottom, this rental yield, rental yield is a good indicator of how a suburb performs in terms of um, cash flow or, or in terms of how much rent, uh, versus the property value you can get. The average rental yield in Sydney is between two and a half to three and a half percent. And you can see here that this particular house and land product uh, off the plan and to be built, uh, can yield a gross rental yield of about 4.14%, okay? <clears throat> now, when we are talking about tax benefits, each of us has a gross taxable income. And you can see here on the left-hand side of the screen, top left-hand side of the screen, each of us falls into one of these categories for, um, for tax. And this is taken from the ATO website. So it is advised that if you are between the 120,000 to 180,000 bracket, um, or even getting close to the 120,000 uh, bracket, um, <clears throat> it's quite worthwhile for you to suggest, we would suggest to look at potentially negatively geared properties. As a first time investor, um, it would be worthwhile to look at positively geared properties that are easy to manage and easy to maintain, okay? In a nutshell, positive gearing means you're getting money from that property 
and it's going into your pocket. Negative gearing means that it's going out of your pocket. You are paying expenses. And because of this, this will reduce your taxable income and you can actually claim more from your tax and be uh, in a lower tax bracket. Okay, so this is a quick example that I, I uh, found on the web um, where Sarah pays $50,000 per year on an interest uh, for, a, uh, for a particular property, um, but she only earns $30,000 per year renting it out. Now, if Sarah makes an annual income of $100,000 per year, then $20,000 less because that's the loss that she would make, uh, she would only be taxed on $80,000. Okay, now when we're talking about what do you want, what sort of properties there are out there, and as previously mentioned, there are over 10.3 million properties available right now and continuing to grow in Australia. There are houses, townhouses, duplexes, villas, apartments, land, house and land, and there's also off the plan, which means it's, it, it's not being built yet um, and it's on its way, or it's an existing property. <clears throat> there are different benefits to each of these individual types of properties and it's important to understand which of these properties or types of properties is going to be worthwhile for you and the plan that you have for your portfolio sometimes being stretched for a particular type of cash flow it's more worthwhile to look at an off the plan purchase so speak to a consultant a, a sales consultant regarding which type of property here best suits your situation when we are talking about strategies, and I'll go through this quite quickly, there are, when we're talking about buying and holding, it's simply purchasing a property that you feel uh, will grow over time. Um, and because of infrastructure, because of uh, population, because of employment, it will increase uh, because of the demand. So you would buy that, you would hold it, and you would sell it at a uh, later time when you feel that the growth has been made. Um, so. We've talked on positive and negative the gear properties, so I'll brush past this one and also regarding cash flow heavy properties. However, these type of properties are quite worthwhile for first time investors. Um, and the key thing here is understanding that the capital putting into a particular property does not necessarily mean um, if I put more, I will get more out of it. Here is an example, just move this screen where there was a Canberra based unit investment um, where this was a one bedroom $380,000 versus that five bedroom house and land package 675,000 where you could see clearly that over time um, this property yielded much more in terms of uh, a $205 per week return uh, for the unit versus um, that $151 return um, for the house and land. Okay, so two very different products, two very different uh, levels of, of capital to begin with. When we are talking about flipping properties, this is buying, renovating, and reselling at a higher price. So there's a lot of popular programs on TV right now that go through the process. Um, and if you'd like a bit of guidance on being able to flip a property and seeing how you can maximize your returns with minimizing the amount of input and changes to that property, have a chat with us. Let's look at the past first. 2020 was arguably the year that I'm sure all of us are glad is over. There was a lot of global influences that affected the uh, global economy and also the Australian economy um, narrowing down. In regards to that, the coronavirus, this pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, played a big factor into that. We noticed that actually housing prices did actually increase as a whole. Rental prices did go down and vacancies did go up and lots of unemployment um, definitely went up. There was a lot of expectation that property prices were going to drop by 20, sometimes even 30 percent, but that did not happen. And in fact, Near the end of the year, the same journalist wrote a report suggesting that it was actually quite the opposite. What were the trends for last year? We did expect more trends in house and land purchases, uh, low, low density dwelling. We spoke with Dr. Andrew Wilson, who is arguably Australia's leading property economist, and he suggested the following, that the first home buyer market activity 
is beginning to slow down. Now, over January and February, we did experience this. Um, this is because of the rising prices pushing them out, but now leaving an open market for a return for investors getting into the market. So here are some hotspots that we are noticing right now in the Sydney market performing extremely well and should keep an eye out, oh, eye out for. Cogra. Cogra is the fourth fastest growing Sydney suburb that we've put in focus because of its affordability. Even though there are three other suburbs that are faster growing, we found that the return that you get from Cogra investment, and there are a lot of options right now, over six uh, project type investments available in the Cogra market. Um, this suburb uh, has some of the highest return that you will get, particularly for apartment uh, investment. There is massive demand in this area. It's continuing development. It's continuing rezoning. There's massive infrastructure that is influencing the, um, the employment in that area. And let's not forget to mention the biggest employment hub um, in, the, in, the Sutherland, uh, in the south area of Sydney uh, for the medical industry. That is the St. George uh, Private and Public Hospitals and a lot of the specialist uh, services around there. There are a lot of off-market opportunities also available there right now. Now, when we are talking about off-market opportunities, there are some fantastic options in the highly sought after Hurstville area. Again, this is a low vacancy area. Why? Because of the high demand, particularly for the Asian market. Let's not deny that this is an Asian market, but the lifestyle that it brings and the opportunities that it brings for employment um, and also accessibility uh, to the south and to the city uh, is quite fantastic drawing in a variety and a new um, influx of uh, types of, of, um, of tenants to this area. So like I said, it's a prime location and off-market opportunities mean massive savings for you and great potential for capital growth. One other particular area that is quite popular right now is the Sydney Southwest. Whether you're looking at apartments, highly uh, suggest areas like Edmondson Park and Liverpool, where there are some off the plan, near completed products, where you will see some fantastic returns and some fantastic um, capital growth over time. Uh, we do also experience some great growth and in uh, places like Oran Park and Cobberty, where house and land is probably the best purchase in Sydney right now. So again, I'm Mark. I'm Grace. Thank you guys all for watching the Australasian Medical Services Coalition special talk and allowing us at Cube Corp to explain a little bit more about property investment and hopefully we can make your property dreams come true. Take care. Don't forget guys, connect with us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and on YouTube. Check us out on our website www.cubecorp.com.